trial of labor after cesarean section, TOLAC, the US used terminology, and VB after cesarean section, VBAC, the UK used terminology, may be a little bit confusing as to which patient is a candidate for TOLAC and which patient is not. Togival Obstetrics Part 1 Textbook, page 256, evidence-based table is constructed to clear up the confusion. We will be discussing this table in this short video. In cases of previous CS, the decision to offer TOLAC depends on many factors. These factors place the patient in either category of candidate for TOLAC or not a candidate for TOLAC, so repeat CS is done. First factor is the indication of previous CS. A non-recurring indication as, for example, placenta previa or breach presentation does not preclude TOLAC. A recurring or persistent indication such as a contracted pelvis, glaucoma or other persistent indication means that the patient is not a candidate for TOLAC. Second is the timing of the previous CS. In a patient who has no recurring indication, if the previous CS was done as an elective CS or early in labor, this means that conditions at surgery were favorable and the lower uterine segment was not thinned out by labor process. Such a patient is a candidate for TOLAC. On the contrary, a CS that was done late in the first stage or in the second stage, when the lower uterine segment is usually thin and thus healing may not be optimal, incidence of scar dehiscence during TOLAC is increased and thus the patient not considered a candidate for TOLAC. Third, in a patient with non-recurring indications such as breach, fetal distress, and who had the previous CS done electively or early in the first stage, we now consider scar reliability. One previous lower segment scar by a reliable surgeon in a reliable place and uneventful recovery is considered a reliable scar and patient is a candidate for TOLAC and success is likely. Two or more previous CS scars even if reliable makes TOLAC more likely and successful and has to be taken very cautiously after adequate counseling and proper consents obtained. A non-reliable scar that contraindicates TOLAC altogether and the patient is not a candidate for a trial of labor is a scar of upper segment CS, low vertical scar or unknown scar site due to lack of medical records or a scar of previous uterine rupture repair. Controversy exists regarding myomectomy scar though most guidelines do not favor TOLAC. In a patient with non-recurring indication and who had one previous reliable CS done electively or early in the first stage is a candidate for TOLAC if she has conceived six months or more after the CS is done, which allows adequate muscle healing and less risk for complications. Also trial of labor is offered if 18 months have elapsed since the CS. That is, inter-pregnancy interval of six months, that is time between pregnancy end and start of another pregnancy. Inter-delivery interval of 18 months, that is time between one delivery and another. A woman who conceives in less than six months from previous CS and or her birth ensues before 18 months have elapsed from the date of previous CS and not a candidate for trial of labor after CS. Now we move to examining the scar itself. Clinically a non-tender scar is reassuring and a TOLAC may be offered, but a tender scar is not and the patient is considered not a candidate for TOLAC. Mild scar tenderness is somehow in between and no clear definition exists to define what is mild, so this is left to individual case scenario and individual physician judgment. Ultrasound examination of scar thickness before TOLAC is essential. A scar thickness more than 2.5 mm is reassuring to offer a TOLAC, while scar thickness less than 2 mm is not considered for TOLAC in between these two numbers lies a scar thickness of 2 to 2.4 millimeters. In such a case, TOLAC can be offered, but success is not likely. RCOG guidelines put a clear cutoff thickness of 3.5 millimeters. Above that, TOLAC is offered and below that thickness, TOLAC is not offered. So we now have a patient who underwent one previous reliable CS for a non-recurring indication. She conceived six months or more and her birth date is 18 months or more after CS was done. She does not have a tender scar and her scar thickness is more than 3.5 millimeters as per our COG guidelines or 2.5 millimeters if we follow the COG guidelines. This patient is a candidate for TOLAC if she is pregnant in a singleton with estimated fetal weight is less than 4 kilograms presenting by vertex. On the other hand, multifetal gestation, a fetal weight expected above 4 kg or fetal presentation other than vertex places the patient as not a candidate for TOLAC. 
Now it is clear that a patient will not be offered Tolak if one underwent more than one previous CS or one but unreliable CS, two CS was for a recurring indication, three she conceived less than six months from CS, four her birth date is 18 months or less after CS was done, five she has a tender scar, six scar thickness by ultrasound is less than 3.5 millimeters as per our COG guidelines or 2 millimeters if we follow the COG guidelines, seven multifetal gestation, 8 expected fetal weight more than 4 kilos, 9 non-vertex presentation, 10 last boon not least age more than 40 years is considered by many as not a candidate for TOLAC. Other factors may be used as predictors of a successful TOLAC, absence of these factors does not place the patient in the category of not a candidate for TOLAC, their absence simply means that TOLAC will less likely be successful compared to their presence. Most important of these factors is previous successful natural birth before or after the CS. In both cases, this is a strong factor in predicting successful TOLAC. But still careful monitoring is crucial as there is no guarantee of success. Absence of this factor does not necessarily mean an unsuccessful TOLAC. Another factor is an alive fetus. This makes chances of TOLAC success more compared to a demised fetus. In cases of IUFD, the fetal is soft and absorbs the uterine squeeze. Rather than being forced into the pelvis, the head does not exert the same pressure on the cervix and thus dilatation is slower and labor is more prolonged. Birth at term makes TOLAC likely successful. Compared to post-term birth, this is attributed to larger post-term feti and more tendency for adverse labor events and fetal distress. A mother of BMI over 30 is likely to have an unsuccessful TOLAC compared to a mother with BMI below 30. This can be attributed to that heavier mothers tend to have heavier babies at birth. Labor progress is definitely the most intrapartum determinant of success of TOLAC. Labor that progresses smoothly on a partogram is likely successful compared to abnormal labor patterns of protraction or arrest. This concludes our tutorial. If you are watching this on YouTube and find it useful, please share. Click Toggable Textbook to open the buy link.